half a Hellborn team. Uh, Locomotive's taking him out right away, banning out God at that point. So uh, Tempest is still in the pool, however, because Keeper of the Forest and Tundra is banned out by AFK Milking Cow's Monkey King Rally on the Hellborn side. So Tempest is still up uh, along with Ophelia. So you're going to see that Tempest versus Ophelia uh, mashup here in the lock pool. Ophelia should be a uh, favored one at that. Massive Arms is still in the pool, so I'm expecting the Hellborn team, Locomotives, to address that and probably ban it out during the normal banning phase. And we'll go ahead and see if they do make their way into that banning phase. But those blind bans already taken care of. The teams dropping some GLHFs as both of these teams, the predominant number of players are from Sweden, showing their national pride right here. Maybe for that title of best in Sweden, who knows? But they also all want to make it to DreamHack. It's very much so a cultural phenomenon over there. And how about that? Empath first lock. VN Sensation showing just how important that hero is to his team. Yeah, and so far, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they've had a 100% win record with that hero as well. I believe 100 so. 100% seems like pretty good odds to me. Uh, you heard VN Sensation, he said it himself, like he actually didn't consider Empath to be that strong until support showed him the way. So, uh, you know, for those who don't know, there's support. He's a, he's a 2000 MR player who 78% uh, Empath. I mean, that says it alone. He has tons of experience playing him. Uh, are arguably the most experienced empath player out there, so a uh, very uh, powerful asset to the team. Meanwhile, we haven't seen Tempest actually locked up yet. Normally you see it locked up pretty quickly. Still expecting to see it given that Ophelia is in the board here. Yeah, definitely uh, something likely, but we already see the Ophelia, like you said. She's joined by Fade, uh, one of our initiators, one of the gankers that has really been a little bit underspoken in this event. Most teams opting for somebody like Rally, the Deadwood, or even the Pebbles rather than the Fade. And she really has fallen off the board quite a bit since that Bound Eye nerf. We'll see if she's going to be picked up in this lock. Yeah, I forget whether it was Internet Gangsters or who was running her, though. But it was one of the matches from the, uh, the NAU uh, DreamHack qualifiers, the not not the Swedish exclusive one. And, and Fade had a couple of games where she still absolutely tore things up. So uh, I honestly still think the hero owns. Uh, there are way, more ways to deal with her thanks to the dust buff and such and no longer being able to use the eye, but uh, her initiation prowess is just still hard to contest with. And even things like, you know, blinking and getting a double stun. Actually, it was it was the game we saw. It was Internet Gangsters versus Complexity, right? Yeah, it was where Fuzi played an amazing fate in that series. Yes, but he definitely did. Frequently getting two, three man stuns, but able to blink in, get your stun, get your mono burn combo off, and then actually ulti to escape and go into the trees where they can't really access you, and then come back back out with another combo, uh, kind of a safe initiation, so to speak. So fade, uh, expecting to see her make. Well, I'm taking a look actually with Deadwood on the board. It's going to be hard to say because I imagine Ophelia, or Tempest plus Empath is going to be uh, more of what VN Sensation is going for. Master of Arms not being addressed yet. Ogi is. Parasite being taken out. Did not get taken out during the initial phase, but not going to have another jungler in that pool for free. Uh, people have been forgetting about the, the Warby suicide potential since the changes artillery banned out. Moon Queen still on the board, however. Still on the board indeed. So we'll see if that hard carry is going to be picked up as Pebbles gets taken out right here. We definitely have seen Zergo play a fantastic Pebbles for the most part in the uh, series so far this weekend. And I do want to take this time just to really give a big shout out to everybody over at the Honcast and S2 organizations for allowing me to be here casting with you this weekend on Honcast M. Definitely wanted to make sure that the Swedish Pride event was going to be covered, even with Breaky CPK out of town. So being allowed to cast here on Honcast, always a pleasure, my friend. Yeah, glad to have you here too, Beef. Obviously, we go way back, so not much, too much of a transition to have to cast here with you today. I don't know, uh, thankfully, uh, Master of Arms is addressed along with Moon Queen there, by the way. Artillery and Moon Queen both being banned out by, by VN Sensation. Uh, Master I don't Arms see by a Yol scout ban. Stop the Ophelia uh, combo. You don't see a scout ban exactly, and the belly has shown that uh, he, he can run it and he can completely devastate the enemy team with it. Bubbles being first drafted, however, and uh, Fabelli once again playing it wonderfully. He does not have to play it in the suicide, but something just leads me to believe that Fabelli will be playing in this game. I'm not expecting to see the scout coming out from them. We actually do see Peewee play the bubbles as a solo sometimes here for this AFK Milking Cows team. Um, so they could be looking for something like a solo short bubbles well, with actually, a you know, scout that, suicide. That is, that is a good point because there's only two. I mean, they could potentially get a Tempest there and disrupt the Ophelia quite a bit as well. So we'll have to see here if we uh, maybe have something like 
uh, one of your strength initiators come in along with a scout. So maybe something like a Maraxis mid to run with a, a support and then run a suicide scout. That would be something interesting for sure. Um, uh, is Lodestone actually on the board still? He uh, is. He is. That's true. Oh, boy. They already grabbed the bubbles there. First pick. They those. could run the Lodestone Empath mid with. That would that'd be brutal. Huey seems like he sees that engineer pick again and he's like, dude, give me Swift Blade. It's true. We we I'm saw good. two out of the three games, both the games that uh, AFK Milton Cows engineer. won were both versus engineer and playing that Swift Blade got phenomenal starts. A seven hundred and twenty GPM Swift Blade in the last game. And yeah, no no hammerstorm, please. <laughs> dude, he's like hammerstorm pulls. Hammerstorm is like, no, Pee-wee, no. Pee-wee, stop. Pee -wee. There it is. going to draft that scout, and I like it, though, once again. Uh, no matter what they jungle the meal, slow down the other jungle. Oh, probably should get hold on. Did I just call them. those picks, or did I just call those picks? You did. You did, and I'm proud of you. Um, I, I am as how well. How do you feel man. right now on a scale I, of 1 to 10,000? I feel at about a 947 times 10. Okay. Good, you salvaged that. I was gonna be like, that's actually really low on that scale. <laughs> yeah, that was that uh, would not have been good. Well, fail of the week. Meanwhile, okay, uh, we see Magnus NG being picked up. A couple uh, support options there, and Luna and Empath being available in this lock pool. Um, leads me to wonder if they want to try something sneaky and snag the Empath. They already have the engineer, so actually probably not needing to grab another support. Just gonna. Uh, it seems like they're just gonna give the Empath over to. Uh, to, to support there. Yeah, we'll see what the electric so, diesel well, locomotives do well, have so up there. The or they could run an NG plus uh, Magmas dual lane and wind up picking up Lodestone still. Not uh, not impossible. Yeah, would not be surprised. Dark lady. All right. Dark Lady coming out here. Um, so probably going to be putting her into that short lane and going up against a scout. One of the nice things about the Dark Lady is, of course, could be those Dark Blades. If the Vanish is not fast enough from Scout, they will be able to start locking down Scout in that way. Um, with that yeah. being oh, said, it's actually though, a very effective way to kill Scout and uh, has a good way of closing in the distance. So, I, 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 a lot of times I like when I see when there is a weak suicide lane. Not weak suicide. I mean, a Scout in the end, he can survive and get experience, but he's weak in the sense that he's not going to stop Dark Lady's farm. A lot of times when I see that, a very hard carry like this Dark Lady is a, is a favorable option because you know he's, she's going to be able to thrive up there. And Dark Lady's carry potential, I mean, it speaks for itself. Yeah, it certainly is. So with that Tempest pickup now for AFK Milk and Cows, they have their jungler taken care of. They'll want to finish out this team with an Empath to lane with Maraxxus mid. Uh, what do you see coming out here for the Electric Diesel locomotives, though? Well, they already have their choice of jungle, so Ophelia is pretty much guaranteed. Meanwhile, we're looking at potentially Magma Suicide. They need a lane partner, maybe a Fade. Uh, you could see, see the Deadwood as well to go with the NG, but we could see that Fade. Yep, we're going to see that Fade for sure. The Fade Engineer lane, Magma Suicide. And the thing I like about the Fade here is that it really synergizes well with the Magmas in that um, Fade is a pretty much guaranteed safe initiation for the team. Combine that with the Dark Lady. Combine that with the presence that Engineer has sort of protecting the team with the energy field. And you have a really powerful setup, but Fade with those line stuns not only works well with Magmus and Sunset. If Fade stuns a few targets, or if Magmus stuns a few targets, yeah. as long as the other ones in position, they're gonna get a follow up onto those same targets. So up to like almost five seconds of potential line disable coming out between them. On top of that, it's just once again the, the safe initiation coming out from Fade buys way for a hero like Magmus to not have necessarily have to use his portal key stun to set up a fight. It allows him more to maybe. Uh, get those big alties at the start of a fight instead so well as the announcer says right there we are gonna go ahead and get on into game number one the swedish pride grand finals going on here afk milking cows versus the electric diesel locomotives one of these two teams is going to dreamhack we're here to find out which as we start off the series with a pause emperor it's a hype pause I, I, I love hype pauses, man. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be... I, honestly, that's why I started casting Han. Agree. Agree. Like, there's, there's all these moments. There are all these pauses, which I just have to capture. I, I, I just have to be there. And I feel like the casters, they aren't really hyping up the pauses nearly enough. I mean, they're, they're so, so important to, to a... Uh... I'm done. I don't know. <laughs> it builds suspense. It, it just really... Uh, you can get so hyped during these pauses. Uh, well, 
Right now, though, we're going to take a look at where these teams are going to be going. Five players from the Hellborn team. <laughs> Five players going to be heading on. <laughs> what? what are you even laughing about? You, you cracked open the can. It was so loud. Oh, man. Sorry about that. It was it was just a drink. I didn't mean to. I uh, forgot to drink a little before we started, so I'm sorry about that. But... There we go. Not anyway. Um, Five players from the Hellborn team heading down into the bottom lane. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how Scout is actually going to be uh, used right now. We do see Fabelli actually heading out into the long lane, though. Is it possible that we're going to see a short lane solo Scout? It certainly looks like it will be, with Pee Wee going to be playing that solo short. Let me uh, take that in for a sec. They do have the... Mm. Uh, okay, because he does have the ring of protection. Okay, yeah, yeah, so okay. In a, in a case like this, they're trying to just trying to go against the fact that they're expecting the scout to go suicide. Uh, what does that mean, though? Okay, it means that we have bubbles here. Fabelli going to be playing that suicide. He is their suicide player. That is right. So, uh, different. What it does allow is for a free counter ward of the pool. Um, they're not worrying about containing the Ophelia in the jungle as much. Meanwhile, we see everyone heading down to the bottom lane. Do you expect that they might have been trying to play aggressively? If Ophelia goes in the woods, scout can sort of lay electric eyes and stop her from getting creep spawns as well into their own jungle, so they have a way of, they, I think they can kick out Ophelia pretty easily if she chooses to go down there. But yeah, it looks like they, they chose to mix it up. Why, in your opinion, Beef, do you think they chose to send the, uh, the scout to this lane instead? Well, I think that they might suspect that there's going to be an aggressive pseudo tri lane down here with the uh, Ophelia heading down there and then possibly something like the Engineer plus Magnus or Engineer plus Fade in the lane, Scout utilizing that Vanish might actually be able to get a very good time down there, getting levels as well as some last hits coming out of those Vanishes, and he might just have a little bit better of a time down there than Bubbles, and Bubbles is going to then be able to have a little bit stronger of a time against Dark Lady, provided she does not get extremely early Ghost Marches and then just charge and run that Bubbles down, so... I think right. that's um, a possibility. Taking a look here, though, you did see uh, Ophelia, as you said, uh, she picked up her Boots of Speed and two Mana Potions. That, that is the item build of an aggressive Ophelia. So uh, trying to make way into this uh, the enemy camp, I wonder how Tempest is going to adjust after scouting him out. I mean, they have a pretty decent level 1 team here, uh, minus the Ophelia. Of course, they have the Burn of Tempest on the other side. So they're trying to find something, trying to make something happen. All camping here is 5, man. They're really getting aggressive. Uh, meanwhile, Moraxis, he's like, just going to sit here and lay, not really going to worry about scouting things out even pull, being pulled the health potion just uh it's gonna be that durable force in the mid lane i gotta say i usually see maraxis's mid man they for some reason it just sort of tapers off I, I don't see them have the impact uh that would like when they're when they're left in a solo position mid i should say uh they a lot of times aren't able to have the impact i'm used to seeing a maraxis have on a game i will say that zergo's maraxis is one of the best i've seen i haven't seen it since he was with dmsm probably about two or three months ago but I seem to recall him playing an absolutely fantastic Maraxis, constantly landing double quakes and making sure to utilize his abilities to the fullest to really make sure to um, maximize his effectiveness with that hero already. Getting a pretty dang good block here in the middle lane. He will be going up against Fade Engineer in the middle lane, so we will be seeing that Suicide Magnus. As soon as that happens, we're going to have to check and see if support will rotate or if uh, he's going to be staying down here and just trying to zone mag. Yeah, we support. We've seen support typically uh, just with empath, especially play it more of in a, a safe positioning here, uh, in in this in the easy lane and pick up experience and eventually become part of the game a little bit later on. Just choosing to create the lane advantage for his farmer hero on his side, especially with the fact that Ophelia is down here. I can definitely see him uh, playing it more in that style. Maraxis was pulled the regen, so to me it says, "Hey, we're planning on abandoning you, man." Yep, going to be playing that uh, Maraxis solo mid along the way that he has played the Rally solo mid against two a few times. His Burning Shadow is already going to be coming out. There's the keg. Ophelia coming in with the Skeleton King as well. Skeleton King needs to close the distance, but Ophelia actually in the front right now. There's the King's Grass going out. Another Absolutely Burning Shadows true. is available here in one second. There it is, and Maraxis will go down. I so, cursed him. I cursed I It was did. my fault. I'm sorry. It's uh, the caster's curse, great. man. It's real. Yeah, great rotation coming out, and now Ophelia having uh, obtained the the bloodlust kill is like, hey, I'm not gonna really risk it. Yeah, I'm gonna play it safe from here. A quick one and done in the enemy jungle, and uh, resumes his pattern. So very, very well done by Nearman. Yeah, quite well indeed. And 
Yeah, definitely love that he actually did go for the rotation back now. In the bottom lane, unfortunately, the Legion team losing a lot of lane control there as the result of Empath actually having a rare mistake there by uh, support. He actually went in for a wall on Magnus, landed the wall, then started auto-attacking, dragged the double archers onto himself, and then dragged them around the backhand, and one of them de went for the back tower. The other one got cleaned up uh, by an errant creep wave while the creeps yeah. did move into the tower. And so as a result, they've lost lane control here, and Magnus is going to start to get a lot of experience that he otherwise wouldn't get. Yeah, honestly, though, he has the triple stack coming out here. He's making the pool happen, so he's in either way of getting lane control right on back, yeah. so... Uh, not that big of a deal, but yeah, he did hit level 3, so... Doing alright. How is scout farming so far? 260. Sure. Um, you know, due to the fact that level 1 counter wards became available again, look at the sniping of Raxus, by the way, Mill, using his axes to try to pick up some CS, and... Uh, one of his 3 CS he just claimed that way. I was gonna say... Since uh, level 1 revelation wards became available, it became a little bit less of an advantage that scout has in the short lane. Where he's able to, uh, you know, he used to be the only hero that could do the level 1 deny on the ward. So that was something that was an advantage exclusive to scout. Ever since the wards of Rev became available at level 1 again, though, at the 0 minute mark, uh, that's kind of changed up. Well, right now we don't see him really using those electric eyes. Has one point in him just for the silence right now, but uh, hasn't really been using him so much for the vision. And I'm going to be interested to see how Pee Wee actually chooses to build this scout. Normally, and for a long time, we've seen Scout go something like that, <laughs> something like that early ruined cleaver, uh, and then really go the farming route. In the recent suicide scouts that we've seen, going uh, something like Ghost Marchers into an Energizer, what do you think? Is he going to go for a farming build or try to stay active? You know, most of the time when I've seen teams really rely on Scout as being their sort of hard damage carry, uh, you do see the ruined cleaver route. Um, I don't know what Pee-wee's style with it is, if he agrees in the same thing. And normally in the Suicide Scout, you go for the early items to make sure that you have a presence. And I feel like Scout's a very good hero played in that role. Uh, that being said, Rune Cleaver does allow him to have a, a lot of movement around the map, too. Uh, gives him sort of the, what he needs and the, the, the fast ability to clear uh, camps and that mono regen helps him scale well. So given how fast his farm is, it is likely we could see that Rune Cleaver build. But you know, teams have been changing up their style a lot lately. Uh, going to be a little bit tough to say. Tough to say indeed. A good play by, again, playing this Magnus. He did actually get a great level 2 Lava Surge onto Empath, and it was enough to actually snag the Invisibility Rune bottom. Middle lane, though. Beautiful wall coming in. The Essence Link breaks. Gets the two seconds done onto Engineer. The Glacial Blaster there as well, and the Auto Attacks do finish off Engineer. So, support. Level 4 now. Going on the roam and setting up kills like he normally does. Not just support, though, man. That kill would not have been acquired True. if it wasn't for VN Sensation playing Tempest. It's always, as I say, uh, and that's why I heavily dislike passive junglers, it, it's whoever gets involved first. I mean, in this case, Ophelia got involved, but then Tempest got involved right afterwards. But the, the presence of the jungle hero on that mid lane uh, just honestly just sets the pace of the game so, so much. Oh, absolutely, and uh, so far we have not really seen the Ophelia get active after that first kill. She hits level 5 now, destroying her Vulture Lord and grabbing another Skeleton King. So with the Skeleton King-Minotaur combination, I'd really like her to try to set up a kill maybe onto this Bubbles in the top lane where we have not seen really... Uh, we haven't talked about this top, top lane at all yeah. yet. Dark Lady, uh, combined with Dark Lady, that Skeleton King Mentor would be very effective at dispatching this bubbles. We see right here Ophelia is actually moving through the river. The war just died out for uh, our, our friend Bubbles there, so Fabelli gonna have to be careful. Dark Lady charging up, getting ready to go in. Shell Surf is down, Beef. Yeah, this bubbles is going to be in trouble. There's the King's Grasp. Minotaur Stun comes out and Bubbles will drop, so Dark Lady helping to get that one right there. Nier actually picks up the kill, though. 1-0-1, one, and, one, and that's exactly what we are talking about, that Ophelia getting active. Yeah, how about that timing, though, man? Ophelia was roaming uh, through just as the ward died. Chose to take the river path regardless. And then just as Ophelia was waiting there ready to gank is when he chose to use his shells. Or if it's like everything going wrong for our friend Belly over there. Uh, meanwhile, is... fight breaking out in the bottom river. Yeah, he's still pretty low. Hasted Empath is going to walk away without breaking the Essence Link. 
Uh, she's going to go for a wall right here onto Engineer Solo. Beautiful wall comes out. The Axe, unfortunately, going to miss. There's the keg coming in, but the Glacial Blasts are there. There's Shelter Song of the Sea with the Kelp Field. Fade going to take the stun from the Kelp Field as well, and a great body block from support. The auto attacks are there. Fade trying to go for the Juke, but one more auto is going to be enough. Fade is going to find that auto, but a Lava Surge comes in, saving the Fade. Down goes the Bubbles, and Empath is now stuck as well. Going to actually have to use the TP here, most likely, and Tempest is not out of the woods yet. King's Grass comes in, Minotaur stunned, and down goes Tempest. That was so wow. unbelievably massive, man. That was so unbelievably massive. The double stun right there into the fog, onto those two heroes. The Juke around the side, he survived that one extra hit thanks to his shield proc coming in, and that allowed him to survive, getting the team support, and holy crap. Holy crap. <laughs> Meanwhile, though, Scout did get the power push onto the bottom lane. He's still farming very well. 410 gold per minute but is it going to be enough right now on the other side of things dark lady farming well but even more importantly than that fade and ophelia both having a great start and they're going to start to snowball here they're going to start to be the real pressure makers uh on this hellborn team yeah 355 gold per minute fade right now compare that to Morax is sitting at 258 combined the fact that fade skill set allows her to get active and create those opportunities a little bit more early on uh, going to be keeping an eye on how Yolm chooses to play this. Uh, chose to port back into the middle lane here, and his ultimate is still up, so not going for a real sneaky gank right now. Meanwhile, top lane, Ophelia is going behind the bubbles here. And there's the King's Grasp. Unfortunately, the minutes are not in position. Great use of the Shell Surf there by Fabelli. He gets out of there, no problem. Maraxis wanted to go for a kill on Engineer, but uh, wasn't quite able to close the distance. Does grab the regen rune that spawned Tomp at 8 minutes in. And right now, I mean, Empath is just teaming up with Scout to try to make sure that they have plenty of vision on the bottom side of this map and that Pee Wee is going to be able to continue farming, sitting on Ghost Marchers, Ring of the Teacher, Mystic Vestments, and a Life Tube. Right now, Scout is having a very, very good time in this bottom lane. Yeah, and pretty much answered us there if he was going to go for that Rune Cleaver route or not. I think if he is giving the uncontested free farm, um, sure, I do agree with it. As we mentioned before, the Energizer and Ghost Marchers route, it's right, but that's more for of a resource star of Scout who's not able to... You know, in a game like this, he's being played as the primary farmer, so... Rune keep Cleaver will allow him to keep up his high GPM while being aggressive on the enemy team, taking their stacks quickly, uh, things like that, so... We'll see right, how... Sustainer alone gives him what he needs to roam, so... Oh, absolutely. Combined with that Ring of the Teacher, he really is going to be uh, quite good on terms of mana and... Love to see him start to get active with that one. On the other side of things, Ghost Marchers plus a Life Tube also finished up for Dark Lady. Their item's actually nearly identical at this point. And now Ophelia is going to come out of the jungle once more and will be trying to take this top tier 1 tower. Yeah, no real push outside of that. They already took the uh, short tower on the bottom lane there. So, this looks like it's going to be a free tower for them. No no defense being uh, posed. Ooh, Just in, actually, now there's the Kelp Field. In. One TP is there. Will it be cancelled? No, Tempest is there. Minotaur's done. Oh god, Tempest gets annihilated. Scout is invis. And there's the take cover, the cover of darkness that is. Dark Lady shells her song of the sea. She's gonna go down. Ophelia into massive amounts of trouble as well. Empath gets the stun onto Magmus and is gonna be looking for a wall here. But Magmus is not gonna use that lava surge just yet. There's the beautiful wall. The axe gonna miss. Quake stun is there and again drops one more time. Beautiful, beautiful play by the Legion team. Tower push was wonderful. The kill on the Tempest was wonderful. That's when you gotta scream, reset, reset, reset. Don't keep chasing, because you know what? Tempest would not have poured in to three creeps and a Dark Lady and the Tempest if he didn't have team support coming. He obviously mistimed it a little bit, but he would not have done that without a, a, a much heavier team presence. So, in knowing that, chasing was just absolutely silly and it honestly set them up to. Um, pretty big hole there not, not a pretty big hole yeah no i mean three deaths for really no reason they they, they came out of that initially with the kill on tempest they could have backed up and had a clean wipe pretty much yeah absolutely but got a little bit greedy they thought they were going to get the bubbles and while they very well might have been able to if it weren't for that scout getting in there with the big electric eye and then rax is following up either way great play from the legion a little bit of an overextension there from the hellborn Scout continues to farm very well. We're expecting probably about a 14-minute Rune Cleaver on Peewee. And that's going to be when the farm war is starting to take place. 
looking at the end game here between Dark Lady and Scout, I mean, how does that one really break down, Hemp? Uh, I mean, it all goes down to the team at that point. They're both very uh, potent, hard carries. Dark Lady is a notch up, but the auto disarm on a Dark Lady in the 1v1 matchup, Scout's always phenomenal at that. Uh, first hit disarm, no problem, when a Dark Lady is trying to go up against him. Um, it honestly just breaks down to the flow of the resources and the team initiation at that point. So looking at the surrounding cast, uh, Fade Magmus does provide very, very powerful initiation. Meanwhile, you do have the Tempest Factor there on the other side. Uh, if they're able to deal with the Ophelia, Ophelia is normally uh, pretty tricky due to the Skeleton King to play against uh, with the Tempest, but not something they can't get around since they have a different primary initiated there, Miraxis, to you know get the fight started along with Bubbles. Yeah, definitely going to be looking forward to that synergy between Zergo and Fabelli trying to get these fights started in an advantageous manner. Right now, though, we have Fade making her way up the middle lane, not Invis, and uh, did actually send some illusions back around the back here. But Scout still just going to be farming out that bottom lane, and for the most part, he's going to be very, very safe, even snagging the refreshment rune. Going to put the hurt onto Magvis. Big 240 crit right there. And Mag does have to fall back, even going to use the health potion. He's just saying, leave me alone. He's just content with being a nuisance, man. He knows he wouldn't kill the Mag there, but forcing him to use regen and just keeping it up. Sustainer is up on him. Does he already have... No, he doesn't already have a, another broadsword, right? He's not going to be looking at a 13 now. I don't know. He needs... He needs to get... He needs two broadswords, right? He doesn't have any one of them yet. I do not believe he has either one of the broadswords at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, meanwhile, taking a look at Tempest here. How's he sitting on looking at... Yeah. Steam Boots being picked up. So not going to rush the Astral. He's going the Steam Boots route first. Astral, you see the early uh, Fortified Bracer pick up, so... Once again, going more for that team fight, uh, push oriented Tempest instead of the all in blink dagger. You normally only see the all in blink dagger when you have uh, another person like in that keeper Tempest combo where uh, someone else is picking it up and you know you can afford to do that. Or if you more see a laning type Tempest. Um, neither one applying in this scenario. Fade is going to be busy building a puzzle box this game on uh, Yola Man. And given that all levels of the puzzle box now see through Scout Invis and they did get a buff in the scaling levels. I could actually see that being really powerful for Fade. Yeah, absolutely. It was never a weak item for her. I mean, it's always great. I mean, it does a ton of damage when you're opening up with the lockdown. Even great for solo pickoffs and providing more utility than that Codex. Yeah, absolutely going to be looking forward to that one. And of course, with something like the Ruined Cleaver that Scout is going to have, uh, he could accidentally go on that Mauler and take the big 900 damage hit. Top lane, though, Maraxxus in trouble. Uses the Arcane Shield just a little bit late right there. The Matrax is there. And the Burning Shadows Cull comes in. Maraxxus gets the Quake off with a nice use of the Mana Battery and will get out of there. So a lot of cooldowns spent trying to kill that Maraxxus. And they're not quite able to bring him down. Yeah, but they made Maraxxus use his ultimate as well. Yep. And sort of forcing him to go back and heal here. He uses Bile Charges, but he needs to go back to base and TP to try to defend this middle tower, which already has low health. Not going to be able to make it there in time. This one, I'm pretty sure I'm confident in saying they're going to have to concede it. Yeah, no deny on that one whatsoever. Empath is kind of hanging around as a TP is going to go into the bottom lane. Scout hanging out there. Double damage, Magmus. Ooh, Mag could be in some trouble. Empaths is, have a Rev Ward here, and they're going to go on to Magmus. There's the Electric Eye Explosion. The Essence Link is there. Essence Link going to be broken, and Scout just going to go with the Marksman Shot. Uh, cancels it immediately, and there's... Well, it looks like Magmus will just go ahead and die. Cannot disjoint that ultimate from Scout, and the Ward of Revelation for the last auto attack. Easy pickoff. Yeah, Tempest going down, though, nearly Maraxxus as well in the middle lane. Got a quick sign off onto those three Skeleton Kings once again, uh, coming out from near and the hero. So he was able to walk on out of there. His ulti was not up quite yet. It is up in five seconds here. So uh, nearly falling, uh, felling that Maraxxus. Right now, the action is moving more towards that bottom lane. Engineer and Ophelia trying to make something happen, but uh, Scout and Empath getting on out of there. And I talked about it before, man. I actually think... Uh, Empath is an absolutely nasty hero in combination with that scout. It makes his carry potential that much better in a fight since it's a lot harder to kite him. And on top of that, it makes his solo ability to do solo pickoffs that much higher. Pretty much, actually, you know what? Every single hero on the Hellborn team, if Empath is on side scout, I think scout can take him out pretty much instantly. Uh, yeah, very real possibility. I mean, especially when you talk about the normal way. Oh, portal key from Maraxxus right there, stealing the illusions. 
Um, but talking about the way that a Dark Lady will normally build, very, very squishy, reliant on the regen and her ability to get in and out of those fights with the silence, rather than actually just being tanky. So Scout, if he does get into position, can maybe go for a kill. Ward of Revelation is down, might Scout out the Fade right here, and Raxus comes around the back. That's an illusion, Raxus though. Fade gets walled off right now, and Fade gonna be the first one to drop right here. The uh, Raxus is in deep. The Keltfield gonna catch Ophelia, broken immediately. The Matrax brings her down. Scout gonna be able to put out the damage, and Fabelli going for the body block onto the Skeleton Kings. Two players down right now. The Hellborn team probably with no recourse to actually go for the defense. And even the wall right there getting the last Skeleton King. Yeah, that was actually a rub ward down by the Hellborn team that should have been able to see the scout, but they had no uh, normal vision of him. So Scout did find the fade though, hanging out and quickly able to dispose of him. You know, I gotta say with just a rune to Cleaver as their primary items, I gotta say, I think, uh, and not that rune, Dark Lady even has a rune cleaver yet, but with just a rune cleaver, I think Scout offers a lot more to the table than a Dark Lady. Uh, the ultimate is great, the silence is great, but she's still very, very squishy, so uh, provided that the Legion team gets to initiate, Dark Lady isn't that much of an issue in a case like that. Oh, Fade really going needs for that. the two-man burning shadows right here, I don't know what, like, I really feel like if he had missed that on one of those players, that Fade would have died right and there. Kill, yeah, yeah, but Yolm being that confident in his ability to stun. Hey, quite confident, indeed. Uh, Empath, as she hits level and gets a little bit of a lower cooldown, they really just have to be afraid uh, in trying to even farm against the scout. That is going to be completely, completely ridiculous. Level 13 scout here compared to level 12 Dark Lady, so uh, not too much of a difference on that end. Everyone's sort of keeping up. At least the carries are keeping up in experience a bit. Scout moving into the enemy woods here, and this is what I gotta say, if you, you see a scout that's ahead of the curve this much, you have to be afraid even when farming your own woods, especially when scout is off the map. Uh, so far we see Dark Lady and Engineer farming that camp together. Uh, scout is just gonna move back to the top lane though, not looking for blood just yet. Yep, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue that farm. Um, something that I did want to point out, just slip my mind there, no. Um, Scout actually taking a look at his damage done to the towers so far in this game. He has been such a presence, not only in terms of kills, 3-0 and 3, not in terms of CS at 131 GPM, as he is kind of scouting around here. What's up? No, I was going to say he is scouting around. He was right on top of that Ophelia. I'm just oh, kind of yeah. waiting for action to happen. Oh, he here. wants this so, Magnus. Right. That's who he wants. He wants that Magnus's body, man. He does indeed, and there's the Quake coming in. The auto attack damage in three hit by Scout. Ultimate Warrior Streak. Ophelia heal used. Fade activates the reflection, trying to get out of there. A nice turret going to slow down Maraxis considerably. And there's the detonation on the Matrax. Oh God. He has the portal key available, though, so yeah, she's going exactly. to get out. I'm trying to go for Maraxis. I thought uh, no one was really responding from the Legion side. They were just content to pull back. I was saying if they kept chasing anyone, pour it in from the Legion side. Uh, that could have been looking bad, even for Hellborn. But yeah, it shows to this back down out there did not want to fight any further um scout man looking for that miraculous initiation to another kill but not able to find the angle so content to farm the creep wave yeah um back to what i was saying though about the the tower pushing he's actually done more damage to towers than uh, anybody else on either team at this point uh at this point really just ahead of the ophelia so when you talk about Ophelia and her primary objective being that support and push, I mean, Scout is doing just as good of a job, if not better than her right now. Peewee definitely having a very, very good start. Continuing to farm above 500 gold per minute. Already with that Abyssal Skull, he's got enough mana to stay invis permanently now. And uh, it's just kind of getting out of hand. We'll see what he builds next. Yeah, I mean, he can literally farm anywhere he wants on the map, too. Enemy woods, his woods. I mean, the invis on Scout just provides so much uh, uh, prote protection in those terms. You see Dust being picked up by uh, Fade. Uh, that was it, right? Wasn't the puzzle box? She already had Dust, actually. Did she get the puzzle box? Uh, she may have... I did not see it. It's very possible. No. No, it was just the Dust being picked up. Yeah, unfortunately for Yolam, his uh, farm has dropped off a little bit, down to 285 gold per minute after picking up that bolstering armband. Scout clears out some triple stacked ancients, bringing him up to 540 gold per minute. 545 even is, he is just monstrous. He has enough to almost get a shrunken head at this point. He'll have it in about another minute and a half if that's the route he wants to go, which I think is probably the route he needs to go. Yeah, looking at all the damage they have and even the fact that he's still pretty squishy shrunken head would buy and far make the most sense. Oh, 
right now we have lane the illusions just actually from Raxus. he's positioned behind him a bit but yeah both teams content to well especially the hellborn team just playing it really really safe and where they farm uh scout moved into the hellborn woods but uh observer ward placed by booyah there uh should have seen him as he chose to invis to the right there yeah, we actually see four players now moving up here. How many dusts do we have? How many revs do we have? Four revelations on Ophelia. You got dust on Empath, dust or excuse me, dust on Engineer, dust on Fade. Uh, they're definitely wanting to set up onto Scout, but Scout's already down the river. He's in the middle lane. Saw the rotation heading up there, or at least sensed it, and now they're just going to go for a counter kill on mid tower. Yep. Every game, too, by the way, support, no matter the hero. When he's on that support role, he does prefer the Blade of Greaves over the Steam Boots. Yes. As is even the Striders. Although the Striders have fallen a little bit out of fashion lately. Uh, I feel like they're always better sort of for more aggressive play. And uh, not that ganking isn't in style right now, but not as much uh, the, the heavy roaming, which is where they tend to uh, oh, thrive. Oh, Marax is caught out right here. There's the King's Grip, the uh, Puzzle Box Mana Burn coming in. He does still get the Quake off with another clutch Mana Burn. Uh, Mana battery. Bubbles is in there with the silence onto four, though. Tempest looking for the elements of void. Gets interrupted immediately. Burning Shadows energy field is there. Engineer going to be taken out by Scout immediately. He's working on the energy field now. There's the Lava Surge to finish off Tempest, and Scout's going to try to get away. The dust is applied onto him. He's running out of there, though. Raxus and uh, Magmus is going to be squaring off right here. There's a buyback coming in right now. Uh, that was not Maraxis. a buyback. Somebody actually, no, yeah, Maraxis did buyback. There's the three-man quake. The uh, bubbles shell surf. Song of the Sea comes in. Ophelia gonna be taken out right here. Down goes Magnus and Dark Lady gets stunned out. Two and a half seconds on that stun from Empath. Marksman shot slowing him down. Scout closing the distance right here. Electric Eye Silence coming in and Fade Scout going. The, the oh, Fade. fade. Well, man. Oh, the oh, Empath God. wall coming oh, in and Dark Lady goes down. Fade bites the dust and a genocide coming out. That is the power of this Legion team. See you later, Elphelia minions. They're going to get the tower as well. And this resource lead is gigantic. Well, on top of that, can you, can you believe that the Silence actually hit the Fade too, who was trying to support the uh, Dark Lady running away? He was actually in the river along the edge and he got hit by that electric eye Silence, man. He must have been so frustrated. And then as he postured and tried to move back, the wall came out. Support picking up the double tap, creating the genocide for his team, man. And the snowball just continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, uh, I just... How about them Raxus on too? The buyback oh on God, Raxus. yes. Trying to catch the fleeing Hellborn team. Or they were positioned in middle, actually. I'm not even sure if they were fleeing at that point. But came in and got two or three heroes. Set that fight up so nicely for his team. Very, very well done. I talked about Zergo playing a very strong Braxis, even though he did die at the beginning there. Even though the Elemental Void got interrupted immediately, the team was still able to bring it back. The great coordination, and that puts him in a massive advantage. And I just want to talk about these scout items really quick. 24 minutes in, scout is sitting on Ghost Marchers, Abyssal Skull, Ruined Cleaver, Shrunken Head, and an additional 3,000 gold. 600 gold per like, minute. I'm too easy this. It's a combination of efforts. Pewee is an absolutely amazing player. I have nothing but incredible respect for him, but it is the team effort in the end that creates the room. Still, when it comes to getting farm and not screwing up what you do with the farm, he is an incredibly tight, uh, mechanically skilled player. And you know that if uh, a player like Pewee gets farm, your team has to be worried. Level 18 scout, sitting on nearly 700 experience per minute. He's looking for a kill under the Ophelia right here. Um, very well might find it. There's the Ward of Revelation that's going to drop. Scout has been revealed at this point. Another Ward of Revelation goes down. He saw that one. Meteor, uh, Minotaur Stun comes in. There's the Song of the Sea. Shrunken Head gonna be used right here. The Kelp Field goes out as well. Scout still in some massive amounts of trouble. Actually needs to back up. He gets the kill onto Dark Lady first. Scout will go down right now. And there's the Bound Eye Fade. And Scout... Uh oh, if they keep chasing Bubbles, man. Raxus is ready to rumble. And Scout has control. a buyback. Will they go in? No, not going to happen. So five players from the Hellborn taking out the scout right there. They lost their own hard carry in the process, though. Yeah, still killing scout, a uh, worthy endeavor. He's level 18. Um, puzzle box three will allow to be uh, farmed up at this point from the Fae during this downtime. I believe he has level two being flown out to him. Uh, nope, not yet. He did spend his gold, however, so he's got to have some upgrade, right? Maybe not. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. He got that uh, mound die, so I don't know. 
don't think so. It's sitting on just one for now. I like the health flower. Um, that the uh, the bubbles is working on too. Yeah, absolutely. For Belly, I mean, kind of an unsug hero this game. After uh, doing well in his lane, sitting on three, two, and six, he's sitting at uh, three hundred twenty gold per minute as well. Has the shrunk, or excuse me, has the portal key plus the push stick, and already one of those three arcanas for the health flower, like you mentioned. So. He's been doing very, very well for his team. and Oh, my God. Fade being caught out of position here, Beef. And, well, there's the Burning Shadows coming in. But there's a haste available. But she goes down. Bound Eye recovered immediately by support. Saying, hey, Courier, go ahead and take this uh, Revelation. And I'm going to pick up this Bound Eye because that's better. Yeah, you know how that happened, though, right? Electric Eyes plays all along the way by Pewee. Maraxis is waiting. He saw him run by the first one. He was waiting by the second. Uh, completely camping it. Caught that Fade. Just completely... Completely unaware. Uh, opening up a great, great team fight opportunity here in the top lane should be an easy tower push. Scout does have a does not have a port available, so he's going to hard push this bottom lane instead. Yeah, and that uh, is going to be a pretty successful push. There are three oh. players here: Dust on the engineer, and we also have Dark Lady with the silence available. But Scout is already out of there. Top tower goes down. And Blessed Orb picked up by Scout. Yesterday we saw AFK Milking Cows go for the Sheep Scout. What do you think the Blessed Orb is for today? We saw the Sheep Scout and it was in a game. Well, right now if he had a Sheep Stick, they have a 13.68 gold advantage. He can pick up a Sheep Stick and still be ahead of the, the, the curve in terms of carry. Uh, shut down a hero like this uh, Dark Lady who doesn't even have a shrunken yet, head yet. And when she does, can be providing an immense amount of disable. Still, that being said, mm, I mean, we could, man. He's sitting at 2,100 gold. I mean, at, the, at this point, it would not be surprising if he did pick it up. Yeah. Very real possibility. As a gank tool, yeah, because he, he is sitting at that massive pull. Going on 2,700 gold. I uh, hasn't picked anything up yet. and He could have uh, a sub-30 possible. sheep stick right here. Yeah, with a ruined cleaver and shrunken head. And of course that does give him some additional life. It's going to give him uh, the ability to solo anyone on this team, hands down. He actually wants to go in middle lane right here. There's the Kelp Field going to be used. Electric Eye Silence, Shrunken Head immediately. Dark Lady in some trouble. There's the Quake going to be going out. Ophelia Heal is there. And Dark Lady is actually sent back, but down goes Fade. The Energy Field catching out Maraxis right here. Tempest uh, in some trouble. There's the Lava Surge Eruption coming in. Bubbles taking a lot of damage, but Magmus gets four shot right now. Dark Lady is porting back in. There's the second Quake. Down goes Ophelia. Another set of dust going to be going up. The wall is there. Engineer in some trouble. The Axe going to connect. And there's the Glacial Blast. Peewee with the hat trick already. Dark Lady with absolutely no response. And that might have done it right there. The 20k advantage is coming out. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> this AFK Milky Cows team is on fire. They are absolutely insane today. Yeah, and the, I think that's the sheep stick purchase, purchase is coming out for Scout. Bubbles very close to his health flower. It well. has a second Arcana. Uh, huge jump, huge jump. I mean, uh, Scout was ready. They saw everyone fleeing from the mid lane. Bubbles caught him right on the edge of his kelp field. Of course, the quick stun coming out because he placed that kelp field sort of far away from them. So as they ran, they only had to run it like an inch in order to break it. Quick silence coming out onto the Dark Lady. Very fast response from Ophelia, sending that Dark Lady back, but it didn't matter. She was too far out of the fight. And at, point, at that point, they were caught too far uh, flat-footed. So it was pretty much just easy pickoffs from there, man. And Empath and Scout uh, as one, just tearing up the enemy team. All right, this is... This is absolutely an incredible display so far. Double damage just bottled up by Maraxis. The token of life here on Scout. Would not be surprised to see Scout chuck this DD. Uh, he found Ophelia. She's going to get opened on the sheep. And there's the sheep. She goes down. Peewee, an ultimate warrior streak again. 650 gold per minute. Uh, Scout does get locked out. Oh, a miss right there. Maraxis turns it around with the Matrax stomp right now. On to Magnus. There's the Kelfield going to be coming in. Dark Lady going hard onto Bubbles in the background. Will he even be able to get Bubbles? Oh, my God. Scout gets the courier as well as Magnus. And he's looking for more. Has a sheep stick up in seven seconds. And is going to go vanish once again. Going to turn it around. 
Two shot onto the fade, but no fade gonna get the burning shadows and does get away for now. Scout takes another King's Grasp as he is getting locked down pretty hard. Dark Lady trying to tunnel her way through some trees and will charge back through the Miraxis. Bubbles is there though, gets silenced himself. There's the Quake stunning out Dark Lady though, and Dark Lady should get locked down by the Shell Surf now. Scout opening up on some creeps. Fade gonna be coming back in as the vote to concede is applied, and it goes through. Fade wants one more kill, will find the kill into Bubbles. Scout gonna come over with the sheep stick though. Sheep and <laughs> I don't even know, man. This oh, game. Did he, did he go in and kill the guy? He with did. The sheep at the end? He did. Okay, I, I just disconnected at that point. Uh, game was already called, so uh, you know what? If game milking cows, man, showing their stuff, you'll see at the beginning they had some big plays coming out. They had the Ophelia gank, uh, looking like they're on fire, but giving that free farm to Fuey, man, it was able to absolutely tear it up. Once again, huge plays coming out from the entire squad. I can't single out a single person. Uh, Tempest, they had a lot of focus towards sort of preventing his efficiency in team fights. I would say uh, he still did have a presence, but actually didn't really uh, no note the hugest of all voids that game. But I'm just thinking about those team fights: the Maraxis, the buyback, the reinitiation, the walls coming out, the walls coming out, the walls coming out. Man, I know. I'm uh, I'm serious right now. I think that if you took the games, the four games now that I've seen support play Empath in this series and you made a compilation video of his big walls setting up giant kills, you could probably have, uh, you could have a compilation video from those four games, this one tournament. Supports Empath, you have to blind ban it. You have to. You have to blind ban it. I, it's it's just I insane. Joys have options. I mean, heroes are limited in the end, yet he plays extremely well. I can't argue that. I think uh, Empath is a very powerful hero. And it's good to ban it out because it's something he's very comfortable in. But in the end, heroes are limited to the maximum amount of capacity they can, just as restricted by the game mechanics. So uh, if they have a strat that they feel like, you know, Empath is often criticized for not being able to handle, like, the heavy push and things like that when they group up and have the five-man fights earlier on. If you feel like that's the case and you're okay with fighting against an Empath, then sure. If you just want to take it away because he is very comfortable with it and does play the hero to pretty much seemingly near 100% efficiency, uh, then I understand. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be going into game two of this best of three series. AFK Milking Cows one game away from securing an